K Street, Washington, D.C., home to lobbies for guns, banking, defense, and energy, all seeking to persuade, prod, and pester Congress to adopt policies favorable to their causes. Money flows here like a river. It's estimated outside groups have already spent more than $600 million on campaigns to support future friends in next week's elections. Traditionally, it's been the place where, to a large extent, U.S. policy on Israel was defined too. But there's a new kid and a new block. J Street doesn't exist on any D.C. map, but it's the name of a Jewish group trying to weaken the grip of the lobby that traditionally claims to represent Jewish Americans. Its bottom line, a two-state solution for Israel-Palestine and a diplomatic deal with Iran. Field and Walter Jones. So we endorse members of Congress and senators for office, uh, those that we think will champion our issues. So folks that will speak out in the halls of power for a stronger U.S.-led effort to help uh, resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And for those that are champions, we try and make sure that they have support from the Jewish community and get elected and re-elected and champion our views. But J Street's comparatively progressive views on Gaza and on settlements are anything but shared across the Jewish lobby, who accuse them of splitting the unity of one of the country's most powerful voting blocs, led by the largest American-Israeli interest group, AIPAC. One of the strengths of the pro-Israel community before we had J Street was our perceived unity. And when you introduce J Street as another lobbying organization that's explicitly opposed to whatever AIPAC is pushing, you end up weakening the message that the Jewish community in the United States is more or less uh, united in its support. I would say a, a true friend of Israel provides that support for, uh, for that friend, but also you're willing to tell them when they're doing something that you disagree with. The right to disagree is about the only point of agreement currently between President Barack Obama and his Israeli counterpart, Benjamin Netanyahu. Their personal animosity is Washington's worst held secret, particularly when this week a White House official was quoted describing Prime Minister Netanyahu as well, something involving a chicken that means cowardly. Whoever made this statement that uh, Bibi was chicken, I don't know how to say it on TV, uh, uh, that his uh, personal insult about his cowardice, it's uh, completely inappropriate under any circumstances. Almost all American Jewish leaders are very upset with the personal way that the American administration has drawn out their disagreements. Inhale, reach, up, exhale. In the morning class at the Jewish Community Center of Northern Virginia, everyone's in step over the need for the U.S. to be energetically supportive of Israel. But when it comes to voting for a candidate, there's flexibility over how that support might play out. I don't expect them to agree with everything the Israeli government does, but I will certainly want them to be concerned and understand Israel's security. I want them to say that Israel is, do, does the right things to protect themselves because nobody else is protecting them. Well, I don't necessarily agree with the policies of the current uh, administration in Israel. On the other hand, uh, I expect the politicians to defend Israel. On the ticket in Northern Virginia, former car salesman Don Beyer. Everyone knows Volvo makes the safest car. One of the 95 congressional candidates endorsed by J Street. He's expected to win, but has taken a number of endorsements to carry him over the line. Because a, a group like J Street or the Humane Society or Planned Parenthood or many others, Sierra Club, um, they have lots and lots of members. And if they endorse you, they will send blast emails and maybe even paper letters to all those members again and again and again, asking them to support me. So those votes will be very important. It's too close to call which party will control Congress this time next week, but there's a very real chance that when the new members take their seats, they'll arrive with positions on the Middle East that could well define its future.